Last July of 2012, the physics community made a big announcement that a new subatomic particle had been discovered at CERN's Large Hadron Collider. It fit the description of the long sought after Higgs boson. This would mean a major victory for theoretical physics and understanding the building blocks of nature. Two days before CERN's big announcement, philosopher Gavin Wintz posted a video making predictions discussing what he believes would show up in the data. To the physics community and his surprise, he was right. Though it was concluded to be a discovery of the Higgs boson, a very small but significant anomaly was showing up in the data that Wintz had anticipated. Shortly after the big announcement, Wintz posted another video titled The Higgs Paradox, where he explains this bizarre glitch. And these are the, the, the results. You can see here the curves, and I don't have to spend uh, much time to um, convince you that there is compatibility at this level of fluctuation and statistics. Are we dealing with one type of Higgs particle or more? Rather than being averaged together, what if there were two Higgs particles being detected? Do we have the conventional standard model Higgs, or do we have the H plus and the H minus as reflected in the CMS and Atlas data? Or do we have an identity crisis, which is basically both at the same time? In other words, the Higgs appears to be both one particle in two places and two particles in one place simultaneously. The real issue here is that the standard model predicts a Higgs to have a mass around 125. What's interesting is if you come over here you can see the little diagram that I had that I was working off of from the Higgs Paradox video and you can see that I'm subtracting one GeV from the 126 data and adding one GeV to the 124 data specifically because of the way the three-dimensional time equations apply to the Higgs mechanism so that I too can get a zero spin particle. The way I get the zero spin particle is by predicting a thing as we're seeing with the Higgs paradox over here. What that is is that the Higgs mechanism needs an extra aspect added to it and what that has to do with is three dimensions of time and in temporal mechanics you can see that time and three dimensions of time specifically are responsible for mass so we would expect to see that mechanism show up in the Higgs data and we are and I'll go ahead and give a, a little uh, shorthand version of it we're expecting to see a mass of 125 GeV but, but it's being slanted into a, 1, uh, into a 126 range and a 124 range. And this little slanting, this skewing here, if you will, is exactly what I was looking for. According to Wintz, though a Higgs-like boson may have been discovered, there are certain anomalies about this particle that do not match the standard model Higgs. So far, the Higgs-like particle does not appear to be coupling with fermions such as leptons and quarks. Additionally, in the Atlas detector data, there is significant excess in the gamma-gamma channel over the ZZ channel. This same discrepancy shows up in the CMS data. However, the excess is reversed. This is what Wintz is calling the Higgs paradox and it just so happens to fit his model of the Higgs boson. Using extra dimensions of time, Wintz is able to use a new set of equations that seem to be extinguishing anomalies found in physics data ranging from subatomic particle physics to astronomy and cosmology. Since July, the physics community has acknowledged the anomalies in the Higgs particle data and some have even quietly acknowledged Wintz's theories. Right now, physicists are meeting at the Winter Conference in Italy discussing new data regarding the Higgs-like particle. The data from Atlas still confirms Wintz's predictions. The CMS data, well, that's turned out anomalous itself. 
The ZZ Channel data from CMS matched Wince's predictions. However, CMS withheld its data concerning the Gamma Gamma Channel. Wince has decided to take this opportunity to put his theories on the line and make a precise prediction about the CMS data before it is released later this week. The Higgs paradox information is still showing up in the Higgs data where the Higgs to gamma gamma mass is approximately 1.26.5 GeV and the Higgs to ZZ channel, the mass, is approximately 124.3 GeV. Last time with the CMS detector, the Higgs to ZZ channel was similar to this, roughly 126.2 GeV, but here we had a mass similar to this channel, which was around 124.3 GeV. Oddly enough, for some reason, CMS is withhold releasing their data on the Higgs to Gamma Gamma channel, so what I wanted to do was before they release that data, take the opportunity to go ahead and make a prediction of what I think they're going to go ahead and say the mass of the Higgs the Gamma Gamma channel is in their data set. I'm going to predict that the CMS Higgs to Gamma Gamma channel has a mass range between 124.5 to 125.5 GeV but more this direction so I really want to just go with somewhere around 124.5 and just put it right here If we assume that there's just one Higgs particle with a mass of 124 or so GeV, the problem is, is that in the CMS detector, the lighter mass is in the gamma gamma channel, whereas in the ATLAS detector, the lighter mass is in the ZZ channel. So if the Higgs gamma gamma channels or ZZ channels, and those are the channels it can go to, and it has a mass of around 124 GeV, then it almost appears as though the same particle is happening at ATLAS and CMS, and somehow through entanglement, another Higgs particle, so we'll go ahead and make that Higgs minus, make this Higgs plus, some other particle with the same decay modes, but a heavier mass of approximately 126 GeV, is happening in the subsequent decays, whereas the, the Higgs to ZZ channel has a heavier mass here, and the Higgs to Gamma Gamma has the heavier mass here. So we could correspond the masses like this. So the problem here is that we have one particle and two detectors at the same time in both instances, which is extremely peculiar and odd. So what's the alternative? And that is to go, okay, well, what we have is we just have a single Higgs particle, but there is a mass variation that's happening with its decay modes. The problem with that is, is then we have to explain not only why there is a significant mass difference between the gamma gamma and the ZZ channel, but why that reverses between the detectors. Here, again, the heavier mass is the gamma gamma channel, whereas down here, the heavier mass is the ZZ. What the Higgs paradox is, is it appears that we have either one particle in two detectors at the same time, or we're having two particles, and in some way they're entangled in some new form of quantum behavior. Either way, we need to see what the value is for the Higgs to Gamma Gamma channel. If Wince's prediction is right, the data from CMS will show a discrepancy between the ZZ channel and the Gamma Gamma channel of more than 1 GeV. Then the Higgs paradox will be an issue stuck with physicists until 2016 when the Large Hadron Collider is back up and running again.